<laughs> okay, this is going to be a story time video. I um, was cleaning out my, my bill folder, a wallet or whatever, I'm cleaning out today. Came across two pieces of paper, had the number 8 written on it. One of them had 8888, one of them just had the single 8 on it, folded up. And then I remember, remembered that the 8 is supposed to draw money to your wallet. So during that time when I, I did this, boy, money was coming to me left and right. And it wasn't just free money. I, I suffered for it. You know, different lawsuits. and You get these lawsuits, you have to sign a waiver where you're not going to say how much money it was. But I had gotten this big lawsuit from Home Depot. That's the beginning of my woes. They didn't give me enough money because I've had a total of uh, eight back surgeries. Kind of domino effect. But anyway, got that settlement and got it within two months. That was the miracle part about it. But then, I guess about eight, nine, ten, up to four years later, my friend, he's all off into health and this and that. And I was, you know, feeling bad. I couldn't seem to get well like I wanted recover from this back stuff and high blood pressure just a whole bunch of stuff so during that time my balance was off i was like i was drunk i was running into the walls and everything and so he comes up with this raw milk thing and he was drinking it and he said it might help and he brought some over and this voice I tell y'all about, so don't you drink that. And if you drink it, you're going you're gonna to pay for it. And I just, I had me a, a glass of regular milk. So I took one sip of that, that uh, unpasteurized milk. Oh, it was so sweet. And I took a, maybe just a little bit and mixed it with the other milk. And it, it came out to about a half an ounce. I drank it and forgot about it. Ooh, but baby, two weeks later, I was sick. I had fever. I couldn't hardly talk. I had to go in the hospital, and they said I had some kind of viral stuff. They gave me a whole bunch of uh, antibiotics. That was on a Wednesday. That Friday night, the temperature had dropped down to, like, eight or nine degrees that's how cold it was my my ex <laughs> he took me to the hospital that night and my temperature was a hundred and six they worked with me and worked with me and during the night i was talking crazy next thing i know three nurses were dragging me out of bed and putting me in this shower this cold water and, oh i was fighting i thought that was the meanest thing but trying to get the temperature down on the next that morning the doctor came in and told me he said you have salmonella poisoning he said and uh a city is going to get with you and we're going to find out what you've been doing and where you've been and i said salmonella and I kind of thought, but I didn't tell him. But I knew where I got him from. So I called my oldest son, and I knew he was going to let me have it. I told him what I had done. I said, I drank some raw milk. And he said, Mama, you know better. I said, but I didn't drink that much. He said, that don't make any difference. That's enough to kill you. So they gave me a whole bunch of antibiotics, and nothing would work. And then they finally found something that was a combination of, of drugs, antibiotics, that was supposedly going to control it. But they wanted me to go to a rehab, really, where it was a nursing home. And what they did was went in through my shoulder, put a port. That's weird how they do that. They went in through 
my right shoulder, and you could look at them do it. This this line goes all through your shoulder, across your chest, and to your heart. And you see your heart beating, and this thing is is there, apart. And it didn't hurt, but there it was. And you have these little tubes dangling where they could. And she told me she said if they pull the plug on one the wrong one i would bleed to death but they had to know the right one to pull to put the antibiotics in she said you're gonna have to take this on antibiotics at least seven days and then we have got to get you where you're able to walk so they put me in a nursing home and that was horrible this was 2012 so i'm sitting in this nursing home and they brought the food to me. I'm sitting at the table with all these old, old white people. And everybody that worked at this nursing home was either Mexican or either African. I'm sitting there trying to eat and this old lady sitting next to me. Every time I take a spoon and go to my mouth with my food, I go, huh? She next to me, she have her mouth open, huh? Like I'm supposed to feed her. And then her relative came in and asked me why wasn't I feeding her mother. And I looked at her and said, do you think I'm a, I'm a, I work here, I'm a patient. You better get out of my face. So I told him to come uh, wheel me back to my room. I couldn't eat with those people. It, cause they were, that was an old folks home. And I was like 57 or 56 then. But that, uh, that nursing home was rough on me. And I finally got out. And they took the port out of my chest and my shoulder. But they sent home health care so I could get my strength. But that salmonella almost killed me. But the day that I came home from the nursing home, the doctor that did the, they did a spinal tap and an MRI, all of this before I got sick with the salmonella. So I had two things going on at one time. So I'm recuperating at home. A doctor says, I need you to come in. We need to talk to you about the MRI and the spinal tap that we did. So my ex, he took me to the hospital, I mean, to the doctor's office. They tell me I have... MS. And I said, what? I said, I, I'm just getting over salmonella. How can I have MS? And I had, you know, it was so devastating to get all that news at one time. But I was thinking about the, the eight, number eights that I put in my wallet. And I said, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I, I talked to my friend about the milk. He hadn't gotten sick from it. I said, where did you get this milk from? So he told me where he bought it. And I Googled the people, got their phone number, and asked to speak to the owner. And they found, she finally got on the phone. And I told her, I said, I drank milk from your place, and I got salmonella from it. I said, I don't I, I said I don't want to sue y'all, but I want to let you know that's what happened. So she had a real funky attitude. She said, How do you know that you got it from here? It might be from a hole in the wall. You know where you people she's a white woman. You people like to eat everything, so you don't know where you got it from. I said, I'm I'm not here to argue with you. I said, but write my name down. Don't forget it. I said, because you will hear from me again. Okay, so we hung up. But while I was in the nursing home, I had gotten such a bad attitude. I, I didn't want to do my exercise or nothing. But the Spanish uh, nurse said, uh, Mary, do you want a newspaper today? Maybe that would help you. And my mind, I said, no, nah, I don't want no newspaper. And this same old sweet voice says, say yes. And I took a deep breath. I said, yes, bring me a newspaper. This nurse brought me a newspaper. 
And I, I didn't read nothing but the Metro and the death section, the obituaries. I don't know why, but that's what I read. Do you know in the obituary section, it had something about a house bill. I forget the number behind it, but they were trying to pass it where raw milk could be sold in the grocery store and they were going to uh, vote on it. Because and the people that were against it talk about raw milk has bacteria and salmonella and people could die from it and and I say isn't that weird? Here I'm in in the nursing home from salmonella and I see this article. I say wow. So I took the the uh, reporter's name down and put it in my wallet. I said well when I get out I'm going to send her an email. Okay, I do get home, but I get this devastating news about the MS. But this voice, oh sweet voice, says, you need to send this email off to this reporter right now. I said, ooh, I forgot all about it. I go to the comp computer and send her an email. Real nice. I mean, just, oh, elegant. Like, I said, ooh, look at that. But it wasn't long, but it was to the point. I sent that email off. Do you know that reporter came, called me the next day. I said, we want to do a story on you. And I said, okay. But during the time that I had been home, and after I had called the woman that had the uh, the raw milk form, I had been trying to find lawyers, and nobody didn't even want to we, No, we don't do that kind of stuff because there's no way we would know where you got the salmonella from. But when uh, the city called me and I told them where I thought I got it from, they did an investigation. And sure enough, there was a three-year-old boy and another older woman had gotten salmonella during the same time from this same farm. So, but they didn't tell me that. But anyway, so the reporters came out the next day, and wow, they did this big-time interview. I was nervous, and uh, filming the apartment, and my story about this salmonella. They left after the interview. It was on the 6 o'clock news. My phone started ringing off the wall. Lawyers calling from everywhere. And this one particular lawyer called, and he said, I'm in Houston, and I will be on a flight tomorrow and my son said mama that's the one you need to go with so this man this lawyer came in and flew in the next day and he had all his guns in a row and another television station we they want to do an interview at their station so we did an interview that day and he started his lawsuit and all of his information, man, when we went to the, uh, we didn't have to go to trial. But when we went to the hearing, this old man, and he wasn't that old, but the man that owned the uh, farm, him and his wife and their lawyers were there. There's some kind of litigation. I forgot what they call it. But do you know the room that we were in was the very same room that I was in? When I had settled with um, this, I'm a, this big company, uh, home improvement company where I got hurt, we were in the exact same room, same building, address, everything, the same place. I said, what is that? What a coincidence. No coincidence, though. No such thing. But we um, were there, and I, was, I wasn't in a good shape because I couldn't sit up and answer the question so they had a sofa there so i had to lay on it going back and forth because i hadn't gotten my strength back i'm dealing with the ms and shots and medication and still getting strength from the salmonella but this lawyer that i had he laid it on the line and he said this is what they do the salmonella poisoning that I had everything has a DNA strand I didn't know that and the DNA strand from the salmonella I had match the DNA of the of the strand that the other people had and the inspectors have went to his farm 
and they found salmonella and they found out which cow did it. I said, what? And they found out that some poop from this cow had gotten in one of the machines. So this man had hundreds of cows in these milking machines. But that's what caused the salmonella. And they they decided to settle on an amount. It, the litigation took, I don't even what you call it. It's, it's a word. I can't remember what it is. But it's before agreement that you do before you decide to go to trial. They bickered back and forth. Whoever, it was this man with, with, cause the, the milk farmer, his, he was on another room down the hall and he was in another room and I was in a room. So this man was the messenger. He would come back and forth and say, well, they said they'll go down 10,000 more. And my lawyer said, no, we'll go 10,000 higher. It's like, we bickered all day long. I had to get there at nine o'clock in the morning. About 4.30, they finally reached agreement. But they feed you real well, 12 o'clock, they order pizza and whatever. About 4.30, you reach an agreement. And it's the same way the home improvement company did. So I knew what was going to happen. You'd be worn out. And they finally reached a number. And they come in there and shake hands. And they had a nerve to have balloons floating all around. You know, like a party. And I said, as tired as I am, we finally reached an amount. And it's a party. They shake hands. And they tell you how many days from the... You have to sign a whole lot of papers. And you swear that you won't tell anybody how much money you got. And I signed the paper that I would not. And I never did. I didn't even tell my children how much money I got in that lawsuit. But it's like the lawyers are best friends after it's over with. But the man that owned the farm, my friend was still going out there buying that milk. And I don't know how they know that knew that he was the one that gave me the milk. The old father, the man's father was there at the cash register. And he was getting ready to pay for his milk. And the man said, I can't sell you no more milk. And my friend said, why? He said, don't ask why. I just, I'm not selling you milk. I want you to leave my store. And he said, I'm not going to argue with you. And he left. But I, I told him, I said, it's best that you don't buy that milk. Because if it gave, it, it probably making you sick, but it's not making you as sick as I am. But my, by my immune system being so low with that MS, the least little thing that I eat will make me sick. That's, you know, I catch stuff real quick. But that that salmonella wasn't no joke. And I don't even know why I drank. Well, it was for, for a reason for me to get some money. But I ain't trying to do no lawsuits and wrecks and things like that. I want to live and let the money, money cometh, but I, I, I don't want to be hurt to get money. I remember back in the day, oh, you talk about money. Oh, I had money. And my sister's kids used to say, hey, Mary, where you get your money from? And I, t <laughs> I told them I got a tree in the backyard. I got a money tree in the backyard. And these kids, they believed me. The next day, because I told them that at night, the next day they were looking in the backyard and they finally came in the house. Hey, Mary, which tree? I forgot. I told them, I said, what you talking about? What tree? What tree got the money on it? And then I remembered. I said, well, I'm not going to tell you because you're going to pick all my money. So, but they still remember that. And I have got to start envis envisioning a, a plant a new tree because shucks I need my money to grow I need to go out there and plant me another uh, I'm gonna plant by five six money trees right in these uh number eights and putting it in my wallet but I think I'm gonna put them on my altar first and then maybe yeah that's what I'm gonna do get me a dollar bill and write the number eight on it and keep it in my wallet and don't spend, don't, whatever you do, don't spend it. That's what I'm going to do. 
But remember the number eight. Write it on something and money cometh. <laughs> okay. Bye.